everybody this morning, man. Glad you're all here. I hope that when you leave this place, you can say it was good for me to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, can we give a big welcome to our online guest and our first time guest this morning? Glad you're here, man. I pray that you leave better than the way you came. I, that, that's my big thing, and that you find connection here with the Lord and with the church. If it's your first time here, we hope you do that. And many people say, well, why don't you say first time visitors? Because here's why. You don't expect visitors, but you do expect guests. So we've been preparing last Sunday that we would host guests in this church so that when they come, they feel welcome, they feel fed, and that they leave better. Amen? Amen. Visitors are those people that show up to sell you solar panels. <laughs> if you're a solar panel seller, don't be mad at me. They were wearing me out at my house. I'm like, bro, is there just a magnet on my house that says solar panels? And Anyway, that's my big thing. And then this week's been an interesting week. I got, uh, I got shadow banned. I didn't even know that was a word. Pastor Trish had to tell me a word. I got shadow banned yesterday on Facebook. And so... Um, since I got shadow banned and nobody saw it, I'm going to tell you what I got shadow banned for because I'm not ashamed of it. And you don't have to agree with me. That's a great thing about America. We can disagree and still be friends. I mean, on my side of America, you can. I know there's a lot of people like, if you don't like me, you take your ball and you go home. You know, Here's all I said. If we can send $10.6 billion to Ukraine, to help them with a war, why can't we take $10.6 billion for people that fought in wars for us and make sure they're not sleeping under bridges? I just think that, man, can we give a big hand for our men and women that have served this country and are serving right now? I just think, man, if you can send money, that much money across the world that we shouldn't have men and women living under bridges. I, I, I just don't, I adamantly disagree with it. And, and I thank God for the VA services, and I think they're overwhelmed and overworked and all of those things. But they're, when you got $10.6 billion, you can fix a lot of stuff. And we're sending them rockets and money. And then, then we got people over here that have no money and kept us from having rockets. That's all I said. And then they banned me. I make no excuses for being a patriot and loving the United States of America. You know? And if you don't agree with me, that's okay. You don't have to agree with me. There's probably a communist church you can go to somewhere. But it's not going to be this one. And we're also going to back the blue. I support my police department right here. I, do I think that they do everything right? No, but I know that there's preachers that don't do everything right too. But it don't keep me from preaching. And it don't keep me from supporting the good ones. And that's all I got to say. So there's my little soapbox there. And apparently, if you think like that, they kick you off Facebook. Because they're communists. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Pastor Trish was like, you're fired up about this. I am fired up about it. I am passionate, man. You know why? Because I never have to go bed at night and worry about a rocket coming through my window. That blesses me that we have men and women that are protect. I tried to go to the military. I was too fat and out of shape. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Apparently, that's frowned upon. I thought I could be a good target for somebody. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I was going to go do it. And I wanted to go to the Marines. I thought, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way in. Then I found out like their camp is like four weeks longer than other people's camp. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that one. Can, what, what can we, what, what other things do y'all have that we can do? Like Texas militia. I'm all in for that, right? I don't even think you got to go to camp for that. Come on, somebody. You just got to be a redneck with some guns. <laughs> I'm your guy. See, to Pastor Todd for all your needs, right? I, I got all that stuff too. I'm ready. Come on, win. If we go to war, y'all call me. I am your guy. I promise you that. I ain't got no helmet, but I got a backwards cap that I wear, and I'll get me some Copenhagen, and we'll go at it. Anyway. <laughs> Take care right there. All right. So we're in a series. There's people that have been here for the first time. Like, that little fat fella is fired up about nothing, you know? <laughs> we're in a series on, called Running with the Giants, and I got it out of a book by John Maxwell called Running with the Giants. And what he did is he just wrote a, a story about different people. And so I thought, that's a great idea. So I've just, this is my second time to do the series. And I just take different people out of the Bible. And hopefully we can learn uh, some lessons uh, from what they did. But here's our anchor verse. We read this verse every week. Uh, we have one more week and then we're done. And then we're going to a new series called More Than Words. And the reason I call it More Than Words is because I believe that this Bible is more than words just on paper. I believe this is bread. I believe it's light. I believe it's truth. I believe all of Are you with me on that? Good. Michael, is that you back there? 
I see you masking. Don't be offended. That's what he calls me. We're at church. The first time I meet this guy, he walks up to me, goes, what's up, Meskin? And I went, I'm talking to you, Meskin. I said, okay, we can say that out loud. So, hey, Meskin. All right. <laughs> There's people online going, now nah, he's racist patriot. That's what he is. So, <laughs> Hebrews 12, verse 1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. How many things? everything and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, this is reference to Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. And, and you need to know that not everybody that was in the hall of faith lived a perfect life. Uh, I think sometimes we read the Bible, we just assume that they got in there for doing everything right. Hardly any of them did everything right. And it's very interesting. And that gives me hope because I know how many times I've messed up. Anybody in here with me that I could still be there? But we get the, the benefit of looking back at their lives at, at, at real time and, and seeing some things that, that maybe could help us not make some of the same mistakes. And so we all have a race to run, and no one's life is an accident. I don't care what's happened to you. I don't care if it was good. I don't care if it was bad. God has a, a, a divine purpose and a calling for everybody in this room. Can you say Amen. And it doesn't matter where you come from. What you did in your past doesn't change who God's called you to be, right? And, and, and so all it does is give a little color to your story. You need to look at it that way. If you don't believe that, some of you are going to get real messed up. I was a drug addict, and then here, look, 30 years I've been preaching the gospel, and you're like, you don't look like a drug addict. They're mostly skinny. That's why I got off of it right there. <laughs> got back into Little Debbie and Bluebell. And so today, we're going to talk about John the Baptist. And, and, and you want to talk about a guy in my opinion, that stood out from the crowd, this guy would be one, man. Just forget about what he was preaching because he was preaching hellfire and brimstone back then. But, but man, this guy was hard to miss. He wore camo hair for a jacket. That's not a fashion statement. That's something somebody left out and you just had to get. <laughs> Think about that. And I've been to Israel and every time we stop at a gas station, there's always somebody out there with a camel and they want you to ride the camel. They want you to pay 10. They go, come get your picture made. And then after you get your picture made, they go, $10. And you're like, no, I'm not giving you $10 to stand next to a stinky camel. They stink. My God. You can smell those camels for 10 foot off. And this guy's wearing one. So I'm sure he didn't smell real good either. And he's got a big black, a big old leather belt that he's wearing with it. And then on top of that, here's what gets worse. He's eating locust and honey for lunch, supper, and dinner. I bet his breath smelled terrible. Y'all don't think about stuff like this? Y'all don't, I think about like his breath must have been terrible. I wouldn't want him to pray for me. Y'all have never come for prayer? Even here at the worship center, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. You come up here for prayer and the person praying for you, they've been, they're like on their eighth cup of coffee. You're like, hey, how can I pray for you? And you're like, you know what, I'm okay. I am, I am okay. There's mints and all this stuff on this stage. And you're like, you know what, go use them. Use those mints, and you're like, it's a, you know, they say, do you want me to pray for you? And you can smell it like five foot away. You're like, no, never mind. It's a miracle. I've been healed. Thank you. Hey, I got it. I got it all. Whatever you do, and I said this in first service, and I didn't even think about it, but it made me funny. I thought it was funny. I said, whatever you do, don't breathe the breath of God on me. Because uh -uh. if that's God's breath, I do not want it. I, right there is cigarettes and something else. I do. I'm an honest person. I want, if my breast stinks, y'all better tell me. I'm not trying to go up to everybody going, welcome to the worship center. They're like, hey, Glad, thank you. Thank you, glad you're here. Are you tracking with me? And if I stink, I want you to tell me I stink. But I, I, I'm not ever going to stink. But if you got a booger hanging out of your nose, don't you want somebody to tell you that too? Y'all need some better friends. There's been times I've walked around the church and then went back to the green room and came out and I'm looking in the mirror getting, and I go, oh, I had a booger in my nose the whole time and nobody said. So y'all need to get saved and help your friends, all right? So here we go. He, he considered, he was the forerunner of Christianity. He's not only a prophet that prophesied about Jesus. Man, he got to meet Jesus. He got to run with Jesus. He got to hang out with him. One of the coolest things I think about John the Baptist is that he was Jesus' cousin. I would have led with that. When I'm out preaching for Jesus, I would have just said, just want to let you know I'm his cousin. If anybody was thinking about leaving here, the blood of Christ flows through my veins. 
I would have led with that, man. And, and he didn't even use it. And, and so he got the privilege of baptizing Jesus. And, and I don't know this. I have no Bible for this whatsoever. But this is just what Todd believes. I believe when the father spoke down when Jesus was getting baptized and he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I believe John the Baptist got to hear that. I, I just do. And I think, what an incredible moment to be a part of all that. And, and so, um, but what's really fascinating about John's life is not the, uh, the beginning or the end. It's really the middle part uh, for me. In the moments, how many, remember I said this last week, that sometimes life can change on a dime? God, some people that you talked to yesterday, sometimes you go to call them the next day and they're not here anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking? I'm just, life is fragile sometimes. And and in the middle, it throws you a curveball, and it gives you a lot of weight. But I want to tell you, you don't have to carry that weight because Christ is our burden bearer, right? And so John was involved in a scandal, and he's preaching a word that's full of grace and truth. Basically, the theme of his message was repent, the kingdom of God is near. Now, if he's saying that message way back then, and Jesus hasn't come back for the church, how much more do we need to be preaching the word of God that repent, the kingdom of God is near? Come on, somebody. We need the truth out there that we're not living in the last days. We're living in the last of the last days, and whether you like it or not, Jesus is coming back. So he's involved in this, and, and he wasn't scared to get in your face. He's at one church or one meeting, and he's telling everybody, you're all a bunch of snakes. I bet his offering wasn't very good that Sunday. I, I'm just thinking how that would work. But he, the scandal he was involved is you got Herod, and Herod's the king, and he's married. But all of a sudden, he thinks his brother's wife is, is smoking hot, and and. She thinks Herod is smoking hot. And so the two of them, they divorce their spouses and they wind up, I mean, it's days of our lives right there. Come on, some Marlena and John and all those guys are going on right here. And Marlena's not even demon possessed in this thing. Come on. I used to watch days of our lives till Marlena got possessed with the devil. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. She, she floated off the floor. I am not doing that, right? That's when you, don't, you need to get out of days of our life. And if you're watching a novella, and there's people floating, turn that mug off right now, go on, turn that. So they leave this, and, and this is where we pick it up in Mark chapter 6. For Herod has sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John as a, a favor to Herodias. And she, has been, uh, she had been his brother Philip's wife, but uh, Herod had married her. John had been telling Herod, this is what he got arrested for. It's against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. All he was doing was covering Herod's blind side. All he was doing was trying to prevent him from problems and trouble. And everybody in this room needs somebody that'll watch your backside. Come on, somebody. And he's telling him, man, you don't want to do this because it's not going to go well for you. And so Herodias, who bore a grudge against John and wanted him killed, but without Herod's approval, she was powerless. But this is the one who baptized Jesus. I want you to get this whole picture. And Jesus is stepping on the scene. And in John chapter 3, we see the humility of John the Baptist better than anybody. He said, I've got a decrease so Christ can increase in me. This is six months into his ministry. He's been up. He's a forerunner. He's a cousin. He's doing everything right. And doing the right thing got him put in the wrong place. I wonder if anybody knows what it is to know that you have done the right thing, but you didn't get handled the right way. And he gets locked up and he's in prison. And I'm sure that he's questioning everything. Why is this happening to me? All I did was do what God told me to do. Have you ever done what God called you to do and it didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out? Can I preach to some real people here this morning? And I, I, I think we see people, and I've, I've done this before, and I'm like, I understand why they're going through what they're going through, because they're reaping what they sow. But John hasn't done anything wrong. All he did was be faithful, my God. And being faithful to do what God called him to do, landed him up in prison. Jesus' own blood. But you can't say that, that he was doing shady stuff. He's doing the right thing, and it got put in the wrong place. And if I'm John, I've already thought this through because I, I, I see the end before the God's blessed me to be a great vision caster. My staff will tell you that. I, I'm really good at casting vision, and I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on the Lord in me. 
even Jesus, if there's anything good in me, it's because of him. But if I'm John, I've already filed my own 501c3. Come on, somebody. I'm going to call it JC and JTB Ministries. You know, Jesus Christ and John the Baptist for all of y'all still kind of catch up. I got JC and JTB. You can, that's already a rap song right there. I mean, who, who's not going to hit the charts with that? Right, right? You going chart to the, straight to the chart with that right there. JC and JTB to the N to the O to the. I did that beatboxing in the first service, and my wife was on the front row. She did me straight like this. Y'all pray for her. She's got a lot to deal with when we get home. Anyway, and so, actually, y'all pray for me. Come on, somebody. This is not what he expected. Reality. Have you ever been here where reality starts to take the place of your faith? And I believe all of a sudden fear and worry have set in and he's asking, is this the way that it's supposed to be? I did the right thing. I'm, I'm doing what you called me to do and how if you say you love me so much, then God, why am I in this position? Do I got any real people here today? If you're really as good as you say you are, why do I feel the way I feel right now? Why did I wake up today and my life's completely different today than it was yesterday? I don't understand and I feel like this is so relatable where either we have gone through some things that we didn't understand or you may be going through some things right now and it's just hard. How do I make sense out of a situation that just feels like trash? How do I make sense out of something when my heart is broken and I don't understand where you're at? What do you do when you can't make sense of life? What do you do when life throws you a curveball? And I feel that's exactly where John is this morning. And I feel like that's exa exactly where some of you are today. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And I want to tell you that there's going to be times in your life where you feel like you can't hear God. There will be times when, when you feel like God's not helping the situation at all. But can I tell you that just because you don't feel God doesn't mean that God isn't there. And just because God hasn't met our expectation doesn't mean that he's not working. Could it be that we haven't picked up his will because we want our own? I'm going to tell you something this morning. And this is not going to be popular with theology. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how much you pray in the Holy Ghost. I don't care how much tongue talking you do. There are times when life throws something at you and it is tough for you to pray, not my will, but your will be done. They prophesied a baby over me and we had two babies, two dead babies before we had any life. And it was hard for me to go to the hospital and sharing the joy of other people's babies and mine were dying. Y'all not ready for me. And it was hard for me to get excited about what was going on in your life because I was like, Lord, I work for you. I've given up everything I had to follow you. I denied myself and took up your cross and what I got is two dead kids. If you're really who you say you are, why do I cry myself home while everybody else is throwing parties? I'm tired of going to the baby showers. I just want a baby to have a shower for. And I don't understand how somebody that could give up everything to go follow you and all of a sudden that one promises that you've given me has come to pass. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And I think John's wondering, what in the world have I signed up for? Why did I say yes to him? Matthew 11 says this, John the Baptist who was in prison heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. That makes it worse. In my opinion, I'm hearing how God's out doing all these wonderful things for all these people. And I'm stuck in prison. And, and he hears, what does he hear? Uh, all the miracles that God's doing. If, if I'm John, I'm like, I'm glad that the deaf hear, and I'm glad that the blind say, uh, uh, the blind see again. I'm glad that the dead can uh, get up, and I'm glad the lame can walk. But have you thought about starting a prison ministry? 
I'm glad you're helping them, but what about me? Just come up here with all that healing power. And just a couple of verses, Paul and Silas are going to get out of jail. If you can do it in the future, why don't you just go and do that right now? Can I have... Mm. And so John is all messed up, and he sends his disciples. He said, guys, this isn't what I signed up for. This cannot be right. So I want you to go ask Jesus, my cousin, are you really the Messiah we've been looking for? What? How could John be questioning? And, and maybe you got a little bit of comfort this morning that if John, the cousin of Jesus, if he had a couple of questions for God, I think it might be okay with your questions this morning. I think it's okay for you to have those today. He said, are you what we've been looking for? Or do I need to look for another Christ? What a broken moment. Can you imagine? And I wonder what he's going through. Is that where, it, where you have doubts yourself? Is Jesus really who he says he is? Is he really a good, good father? Because right now is not a good, good moment. Right now, all hell is breaking loose. And I know we prayed and I know we prophesied and we sang two worship songs. Or we took up an offering and sang two more. But my feelings are still my feelings. And reality has taken place of my hope. Oh, come on, somebody. I want to tell you something this morning, that you're not alone in your thoughts, and you're not alone when you deal with doubt, and you're not alone when you deal with fear. The one who prophesied with, about Jesus, the one who got baptized in the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb because his mama was stacking next to Jesus' mama. His, his own cousin is having the same thoughts. So maybe you're not a worthless Christian. Maybe you're just a real person with some real issues. Maybe it's not because you don't have faith. Maybe it's just because you're broken past a place that you thought you could get broken. And I want to tell you that life isn't built on reality, but, but on faith that God has a purpose for me even when I can't see it. And I think if John were here today, I think he would have something to say to us. And I think one of the things he would say to us is this. When life doesn't make sense, we put our faith in God's purpose. And I'm going to tell you, 30 years of chasing God, God hasn't always made sense. And one of the themes of our Bible is to be fruitful and multiply, that you're blessed to be a blessing. And, and now you're a disciple. Go make disciples. And God has a plan. And I, I trust you're going to work that out. And sometimes I got to learn on that scripture in Romans where it says all things, not some things, not a few things, but all things work together of the good that are called according to his purpose. So you, I got to put hope in that because not every day feels good. Not every day looks good. And you would be inclined to think that when John asked this question, that Jesus is going to go full tilt. You would think Jesus is going to get so mad, but he doesn't. Watch me. He answers the same way he always does. Not according to your issues, but according to his nature. So I'm telling you, it's okay to ask God, why is this going on? When my last church told me I shouldn't question God, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. You tell them my last pastor was dumb? I'm just misunderstood. You want me to tell you why it's dumb? Let me tell you why it's dumb. Just because I don't ask it don't mean I'm not thinking it. If I'm not thinking it, he already knows it. So because it didn't come out of my mouth, he didn't hear it. No, he saw it. He put your head together. That's scary for some of us, right, huh? Right about now, you're like, dear God, I need one of them, them aluminum helmets to put on. So <laughs> that, that movie Mel Gibson was in where they wore that aluminum foil on their head so the aliens can see them. That's what I need from God sometimes. I'm the only one. There's going to be people out today marketing helmets from God. Just watch. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's okay that God can handle your anger. And I'm telling you, it's okay that God can handle your frustration. God can handle you going in your prayer closet and shaking your fist and say, I don't, I love you, but I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. 
I love you, but I don't comprehend of why you're doing what you're doing. You can go in there. I don't think you should, but you can go in there cussing and yelling and screaming. And all you need to do, I'm telling you, your response is not going to change the nature of who he is. If you could change his nature, then he wouldn't be God. So go in there yelling, go in there screaming, and you know what he's going to say? Peace be still. The disciples, they get in the boat and they're like, don't you even care? We're about to die out here. I can't believe, you're supposed to be this miracle working God. You already done this and done, and we're in the boat and the waves is hitting the boat and we're all scared and you down in the boat talking about. <laughs> but you don't want to be the disciple that's got to go wake him up. Hey, you go tell him, shoot. You go tell him. You, I've been here the longest. <laughs> he picked me first. Y'all, one of you guys that just got here, he expects y'all to still be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and they wake him up. And he don't come and he don't correct them. Why? Because it's not his nature. He understands that they were scared. Help me. I want you to see him for who he is. And he goes out. He looks at the disciples and he looks at the waves and, I'm, and his side, he don't say it out loud, but in his mind, he's like, y'all woke me up for this. <laughs> this way, like, yeah, you ever been to another place and they're talking about the wind is blowing and I'm like, have you been to Lubbock? <laughs> they're like holding on to stuff and you're like, just, is the wind going to blow today? <laughs> right? You ever talk to those people? No. Like I went to Colorado or to Washington to preach last year. And it was an ice storm. And he, the dude at the counter giving me my rental car had the nerve to tell me, you know, it's going to be icy. I said, yeah. <laughs> he says, do you need a four by four? I went straight cowboy way on this dude. <laughs> I said, if it's got rubber, I can drive it. If it's got hair, I can ride it. Give me my keys and get out the way. <laughs> ice storm. Like, we ain't never seen no ice. Feeling me? But this is where my mind goes. But I want to tell you that your questions don't change the nature of who he is. And you understand there's no, no, where he says, peace be still, there's no exclamation point. Because when you have real authority, you don't have to scream. Go back and read the story. I'm not adding, I'm not taking away. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Jesus just goes, peace be still. And I bet the other disciples are going, see, you could have said, peace be still. Listen to me. You could have said, peace be still. You could have said it. I don't know who I'm preaching to. My... Ooh, I feel a prophetic uttering coming on me. You could have said it. You don't need me to say it. You don't need to get a hold of somebody on the phone. You could have said it over your emotions. You could have said it over your brokenness. You could have said it over your sour peace. Be still. Man, I hope if that's you, you, you grab that out of the sky and you file that right now. All day long, the Lord's, every service, the Lord's given me something. Like First service, I prayed for something completely different. Second service, something different. Third service, this is totally different. I wonder if that's you, you are to grab. Look, can we just pray into that for a minute? I know y'all think I'm crazy and you're right, but Lord God, I just say for whoever heard that word this morning, that it would not fall on deaf ears, that it would take root and produce that seed right now in the name of Jesus. And no matter what the chaos is, and no matter what the storm is, and no matter what the brokenness, Lord, I say to that situation, peace be still in the name of Jesus. And he is still the same God that he was yesterday as he is today. And we declare these things over this house in Jesus' name. And the whole church said, amen. amen. Come on, man. Let's give him a good Matthew chapter 14, this is what Jesus said. He said, go back and tell John. Tell him what you've heard. Tell him what you've seen, that the blind see, the lame walk, the leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, and the dead, uh, the dead are raised to life. And good news is being preached to the poor. Go tell John everything he said that was going to happen is happening. And verse 6, and then Jesus sometimes drops the mic, and here's a mic drop moment. And he added, God blesses those who don't fall away because of me. He said, go tell John everything that he did is showing up. The seed he sown is now being harvested. Come on. 
And blessed is he that doesn't get offended because I didn't do, because I didn't do what he thought I would do. Yeah. Blessed is he that still loves me even then when it don't work out the way you thought it would work out. You're not hearing what I'm telling you. <laughs> even though you got prophesied two kids and they didn't come to pass, <laughs> The Lord is the one that it gives, and the Lord is the one that takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. I don't decide that, but what I have decided, that I'm okay with God having the answers that I don't understand. Because if not, I'll drive myself insane, and I'll, I'll question everything for the rest of my life if I don't just trust that he is sovereign, not sometimes, all the time. And I think God would say, or that John would tell us, in order to put our faith in God's purposes, number one, and you think it's going to be a long message, it's not. Hang on. Number one, you got to know his promises before you can go around proclaiming them. When you know God's word and his promises, it'll give you peace. And Jesus is quoting Isaiah when he's telling them, but he's just really quoting himself because he's the one that wrote the book. Okay? And he's saying, go tell John, John, remember the plan. Stick to the big picture. Stick to the plan. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf. I know you're in jail, but everything my dad said that would happen is happening right now. John, don't miss what's happening. See the big picture. So how do I get faith? Romans 10, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is more than just a devotional thing in your life. The word of God is more than just a cup of coffee and a couple of scriptures. It's more than that. My faith is not in my ability or my ability to figure things out. My faith has to be in God's word. That tells me how it is. Because sometimes my emotions will override what this word says. And I don't need my, my, I don't need my emotions to prophesy. I need the word of God to prophesy to these dead bones that they may become to life. Come on. I need my dead faith to come back to life. Are you hearing me? And it's okay to say, I don't know what's going on, and I don't know what's going to happen in this situation, and I'm a little scared, and I'm a little concerned, but I still trust God's word. I still trust God's word. So we got to build our faith, and we, in order to build our faith, we got to know his promises. And the only way to know his promises is to spend time in his word. You can't have hope in a word that you don't know. And in my opinion, my opinion, the reason the church of God as worldwide is so impotent today and so powerless is because they're going around quoting their preacher, they're going around quoting the TV evangelist, and they don't know the word of God for themselves. You need the word of God for yourself. What if a TV preacher, wait, he'll send you a cloth through the mail? You could go cut your own cloth. You could use toilet paper. My faith ain't in evangelists. My faith ain't in the paper. Come on, somebody. You, you could even use one ply. You don't got to have two ply. You're not ready for me. My faith is in the God that wrote this book that he that started a good thing will be faithful to... I think we also build our faith by number two, experiencing what he's doing. He tells them to not only tell John what they've heard, but tell him what you saw. How many of you know there's a big difference between hearing something and seeing something? I want to say to Matt and Chad right now, there's a big difference in hearing about your barbecue and tasting your barbecue. <laughs> I'm not bitter. If y'all think I'm bitter, I'm, I'm not. But I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> Listen, what are you telling me, Todd? I'm telling you this. Don't just come to church. Be the church. Experience what God is doing. Share your story. Quit hiding your testimony because you're ashamed of it. Your story is God's glory, and he took your mess, and he's going to make it a message. So what you had an abortion? So what this went wrong? So what you've been divorced two or three times? So what you've been in jail? So, so what you've done all... If God, if Jesus said you're righteous, then you're righteous. He didn't make, he makes all things new. Come on, somebody. All things. It doesn't matter. Share your story. Don't just watch church. Experience what God is, has to offer by serving. Get involved somewhere in your church. Go to growth track. Let us help you figure out what you're called to do and get started doing it. Something happens by serving others that just you don't experience any other way unless you're serving. I can tell you about it, but it won't make no sense until you do it yourself. Right? 
And I cannot tell you how many conversations that I've had and people come up to me and they say, Pastor Todd, I had no idea that my life could be this good. I know I have no idea how much my life could change just by walking out my purpose and serving others. I'm telling you, something will change. And I don't care if you're, well, at my boss, I'm a supervisor. And at my boss, I'm the CEO. And I'm the, listen, there's no one higher than the name of Jesus. And he said, I didn't come to be served, I come to serve. So I don't care how many zeros you got behind your check. You're no better than him. In fact, ain't none of us better than him. Come on, somebody. Jesus washing feet, you ought to be washing feet. What's getting quiet in here in this little Presbyterian church? Here's number three. I think he would tell us not only know his promises, experience what he's doing, but remember who he is. When life doesn't make sense, we build our faith off of what he's already done in the past and remembering what he's done for others. If God has ever done anything for anyone, can I tell you that he's able to do it for you? I'm not a big fan of Disney, okay? I'm not trying to go on a crusade, but I'm not a big fan of what Disney puts out in all their movies. They're putting all kinds of trash in there now. But can I tell you one thing I am thankful for in Disney is Lion King. Anybody seen Lion King? I learned, the Holy Spirit speaks more to me in movies than anything else. I'm just telling you. I, and that's why I love movies. I'm constantly watching, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me all the time. Don't you remember in the Lion King when, when, when Mufasa tells uh, Simba, remember Remember who you are. Remember. Sometimes you just need to remember who he is. Remember who he is. It doesn't, you know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, not a select few. For all of you, that we're the only ones going to heaven. No, you're probably not going to make it. I just heard a lot of people's feelings. We're the only ones going. No, you're not even going to get there. <laughs> you keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> Y'all going to be singing that song, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> Never <I was> doing. <laughs> I got all these. Let me get back to this. Listen, he loves us all the same, and his mercy and kindness is available to anybody. And it doesn't matter who likes you. It doesn't matter who supports you. It doesn't matter who's okay with your past. I want to say that to somebody. I'm, I'm, I want somebody, man, the Lord hit that in my spirit just now. It doesn't, you're the, listen, it doesn't matter what other people have to say about where you've come from. Quit, quit trying to get people to love you. Quit trying to get people to support you. If they love God, they should already be in love with you. They should already be in support of you. You can't help what you've done, but you can choose what you're going to do tomorrow. Those are, you choose what you do when you walk out of this church. You choose how you act out in the parking lot when people cut you off. When you're, you, you'll find out how real spiritual people are when they get in the parking lot. Rolling down the window, talking about, hi. Y'all know what you were finna do. Nobody here needs to be told they're number one. Or number 11. They didn't get that. Let me help them again. You know, they, listen, listen to me. We've all got a past. We've all got a story. And aren't you glad God is the only one that I know that can take trash and make all things new? There's a scripture, I think it's in, I think it's in Jeremiah, where the potter's pot is broken and it says he could have thrown that pot away, but he chose to make it yet another again. You understand that's what God did for me. Rather than throw me away, see, the church would have threw me away. I'm just telling you that. The church I grew up with would threw me away. And when I told him I got called to preach, nobody believed it. And I understand. I understood that nobody believed it because after I told him I got called to preach, I went back to dope. I, I, I get it. But then when I really, really got out to it and I told everybody, this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, they were like, well, you're not going to do it here. And I was like, good, because I don't want to, because y'all's church is boring. <laughs> I had to say it out loud because my mom went to church there and I didn't want to offend her. But now you know, mom, y'all's church was boring. And so, <laughs> and so when I got ready to build the worship center, you know what I said? I said, God, I want you, if, if you've called me to build a church, 
I wanna build a church where everybody feels welcome when they come in and, and nobody gets judged for how much money they got or what little, how they dress or where they come from or what, if they're black, white, this, what, and nobody cares. That it's just a big living room where we're all comfortable eating up a bag of Cheetos. Come on, somebody. And we just, sh- we just pass it out. Not Doritos, because you can't get, if you give Doritos away, then they'll want another one. Y'all remember that guy, the Eskimo on the commercial? He's out in the middle of Antarctica by himself, and one guy, nobody in there for 100,000 miles. Guy says, can I have a Dorito? And the Eskimo guy says, if I give you one, I have to give one to everybody. (laughs) So you don't share Doritos, just Cheetos. But that's why I built this church, okay? I didn't build it. God built it. He allowed me to partner with him. Let me say it that way. I, 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 I I, I got the best job in the world, right? I get to go to a church where I build a church and all of a sudden some guy I've never met before walks in the foyer and goes, what's up, Meskin? I'm like, I don't, think, I, I don't think I meant that when I was building the church, but come on in, you know. Come on. And now I can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him. But that's, that's what this is all about. So let me tell you something. If you're struggling with an alcohol addiction, we're glad you're here today. If you're struggling with a drug addiction, I'm so glad you came here today. If you're not sure your marriage is going to work out, listen, you're in the right place. We're, we're, we're glad you're here today. If you didn't, if you don't even know if you love God, welcome. I'm glad you're here today. I would never go to somewhere that I didn't even know if I was in on it, but you came today. You know what that tells me? You love God more than you think you do. And I don't want you to feel judged, and I don't want you to feel beat up. If you're here and you're on your third marriage, welcome. If you're here and you've been to jail, welcome. Welcome. If you're here and you have your ankle monitor on, welcome. Come on, welcome. I mean, we're probably not going to let you take up offering, but welcome. That's the kind of people you want to take up offering. You're going to tell somebody no that has a bracelet on their ankle. (laughs) Right? You're not going to tell him, no, I'm not putting any money in. You want to rethink that? (laughs) Pray for me. That's how my mind works. But listen, this is a great day to make all things new. This is a great time to wrestle with all those questions and all those frustrations and all those screaming sessions you've had. Let's listen. Can I say something to you prophetically? Again, peace. Be still. Why are you, Pastor Ty, say it louder. Don't have to. Because the authority is not in what, how loud I say it. The authority is in the man that stands behind it. That's like when you write a check, that's why a lot of people don't check, take checks anymore. Because the person that wrote it knew it was hot when they wrote it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to get some of y'all to testify. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> right? You're, but God says, I can stand by my word every time and I'm not afraid of who you... You can give it to a drug addict and my word's still the same. You can give it to somebody from the LGBTQRS community and it's still the same. You can give it to somebody that's had an abortion and it's still the same. All sin, not some sin, for all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? So that's what's here today. So if you've been mishandled, frustrated, mad at God, don't understand. If you're saved and you've never walked away from God but you're mad at Him right now, welcome. God is okay hearing all that because you know why? He's going to answer you with the nature he always answers you. Your issues do not change who my God is. I want everyone to bow your head. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what are you saying to me this morning? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What is my takeaway? What is my takeaway? And in a minute, I used to give altar calls a certain way, and I had a dynamic, and I said, if you want prayer for this and this and that. But I've learned that a lot of people won't come because they think that this and this. But we've been doing this for the last three weeks, and the altars have been full and all for the glory of God. So here's the altar call today. If you need prayer for anything, anything that's going on in your life, we don't want to judge you. We just want to pray for you. So in a minute, the worship team's going to lead a song, and as they're singing this song, I just want you to come. For those of you that are wondering why today looks so much different than yesterday, God's got an answer for you. 
For those of you that life threw you a curveball and you're experiencing something you never thought you would have to experience, God is here for you this morning. If all of a sudden your life changed on a dime, God is the only one that truly, truly understands why it changed. And he is here for you this morning. So as we go into this song, we welcome you for prayer this morning.